Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam. Saturday Night Special, episode 63. So we got a lot to talk about, as always. A lot, lot of stuff's been going on, and uh, I think we've we've hit some uh, achievements there that we've been uh, uh, shooting for. Uh, as you all know, if you watch my videos, we did a t-shirt campaign. That actually ended last night, and we, uh, we hit our goal. I set a goal of 300 t-shirts, and we exceeded that by 47. We sold a total of 347 shirts. So I just want to uh, give a thanks to everybody for all of your support. Even if you didn't buy a shirt or a sticker, I mean, you guys are you guys are watching this and you appreciate the videos and you like to see what's going on around the shop. And, uh, you know, I enjoy reading those comments and all those personal emails some of you guys send me to, you know, tell me what you think about the show and the videos. But anyway, we did we did good with the t-shirt sales. And uh, so they should be printing them anytime now. I'm thinking within two weeks, everybody should be having their shirts. And uh, uh, still got one hanging out there. I thought I would show it one more time this week. And you know, and I've got mine, and uh, I'm wearing mine out here. And, and uh, you'll probably see me in mine quite a bit. It's gonna be more of a common shop shirt. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy them. So again, thanks everybody for all your support on the t-shirts. And I look, I'm already looking forward to another t-shirt design in the future. I don't want to do it anytime real soon. You know, let's uh, let's wait a little while. And uh, I've got a couple more ideas that that I'm that I've been thinking about. And uh, we get a little time. I'll discuss it with you and uh, maybe see what you guys think. But I do have a couple more designs. Um, I just know everybody's, uh, you know, kind of. We've been, everybody's been doing t-shirts lately and you know so I just did mine and so I'd like to wait a little while before we venture back into the t-shirt thing again but again thanks everybody okay it's been great so the uh, the welding table man you guys really you guys really seem to enjoy last week's video we finally did the build I was really excited to show you that episode I had been sitting on that on you know uh, two weekends I had worked on it there and finally got it done and I was uh, I was really excited for for you guys to finally be able to see it and I got a really good response uh, I really um, I had um, I had very little uh, negative comments made about it and um, I just I enjoyed it reading everybody's comments I think there was over 400 comments on that video already so I think we set another little record with that one so I'm going to go ahead and throw together another video for the welding table, and this is I, I've been I've been racking my brain since last weekend trying to figure out how I was going to do this because I, I I know I know you guys don't want me to keep stretching this out. Okay, we're right here at the end, so I decided we're going to try to complete this in two videos. All right, uh, one's going to be tonight, and that's going to be episode 16. And what I'm going to do is show you some of the painting that I've done this week. Uh, I started on the paint last weekend, did a little bit, and then this week uh, I finished it up. So what we'll do, I'll show you some clips of the painting and how it turned out. And then uh, next weekend's video I think is going to be the end. It's going to be the final episode. And what I'll show you there is uh, we'll put it back together and uh, we'll put our A-Bomb 79, the, uh, the chrome badge. And, I still got everything right here on my little tray covered up. So next week we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get it built. I'll put this on there. And I think at that point it will be completed. And then I'll be able to finally put it out here so that you guys can see it during the videos. It's been killing me not to be able to have it over here in the background. So again, we'll do some paint this week and then next week we'll finish it up. and. Uh, on that thank thanks you guys for all the support i've been getting on that i know you've been most of you've been enjoying that series and i've had a lot of fun with that one so well uh after that we're going to pick out another uh another project to start on and um, i'm thinking about working on my gantry crane outside uh you guys are going to see that in my painting video thinking about working on that i've got two options i can either spend money and buy a shorter caster or I can go out there and cut them off and shorten them and um, I hadn't really decided on what I want to 
what I want to do, but I think because of how much those kind of casters are going to cost me, I might just go ahead and just do the fab work of cutting them and re-welding them, and that'll also give us some uh, some cool video to put out there on the channel. So that that's probably going to be the next project. And then uh, after that, maybe we'll start working back here on the K&T and getting this knee taken apart, okay? So I think that's about it. Uh, so what, what else we got this week that I'm going to show you is some viewer appreciation mail. We've got a few things that, uh, that have come in. I got a couple that was left over from uh, last weekend. And then uh, we had one more come in. I got a couple flea market tools I'm going to show you. And then what I'm going to do is uh, show you some footage from last week where I was working on the little vice project, that flea market vice. I've been working on it, uh, getting it put back together, and uh, we're going to use that on our welding table. And uh, I've got a couple other projects in mind that I'm going to do for that also. And I think that that would be some good SNS footage for uh, you know a few weeks down the road. Maybe we'll do some of that other stuff. Okay, so let me take a break and uh, let's get some of this view appreciation mail. All right, what I figured I'd start with real quick is uh, give you guys a little uh, glimpse of what I found last weekend at the flea market. Uh, this was one item right here. We got some Mitchatoya six-inch dial calipers. And actually, last weekend, whenever I picked them up and I bought them, the uh, the needle was clocked over here at nine o'clock, so it was one tooth off. And during the week when I was out here piddling, I just went ahead and fixed that. And uh, maybe I should have turned the camera on and shown you guys how to do that, but I was just out here playing, but I just got it done. But anyway, it's a nice set of calipers. They're, they've been well taken care of. They uh, have an excellent feel to it. All right. And I'd like to do a little bit of polishing on them just to kind of clean them up even more. So that was, uh, that was one item there. And then the same guy had this also. And that's this Wilton cam action vise. Uh, I think people use this on drill presses and uh, probably milling machines. But anyway, he had both of these items right there. He had the vise and, the, uh, and the calipers. And I was looking at them and I was like, you know, these are some really nice parts, uh, some tools for the shop right there. And we had come to an agreement of 80 bucks for both of them. So I got the uh, calipers and the, uh, the Wilton Vice for 80 bucks. So I thought that was uh, pretty cool right there. And then uh, one other guy I found, he had these four Vice Grip brand, uh, the, uh, vice grip pliers these are the small ones right here and I don't have any like this I got the little pads on there to help self-center and anyway I got these for two bucks a piece and there's a total of four of them right here so that'll go great with my box of uh, C clamps down here that I keep collecting all right so that was uh, that was last weekend's flea market stuff right there and I had showed a couple pictures of these over on uh, Facebook for the guys last it was last Sunday or something that I had posted that up. So we also, uh, Saturday, last Saturday, we got some viewer appreciation mail from our friend Tom Lipton over at Ox Tool Company. Oh, uh, off the Tom. Uh, some of them are right here, these guys. And I was not expecting these. But what we have is some uh, Morse taper tooling. This is one here. Number five Morse taper to a 3 8 uh, will hold a 3 8 shank tool. Okay, we got that one. And these are Morse taper socket extensions. Okay, you can use these to lengthen your spindle reach if you need. And uh, they have other uses also, which I've shown in my geometric die head video. But anyway, this one's really nice. And, and I'm going to take both of these to work and use them on the board mill. So this one is a number five to number five Morse taper. So it's basically an extension. Okay. This one is a number five Morse taper to number four Morse taper. This is extremely handy in the board mill because my spindle is five Morse taper. And most of my drills that I use every day commonly are four Morse tapers. So I can stick that in the spindle and then just put my drills in this and just knock them out and I don't have to use a reducer sleeve. So I used to have one this size and I don't know what happened to it. It just got lost. I have no idea what happened to it. <clears throat> okay. 
And then we got this guy right here too. And this is a straight socket, uh, number four Morse taper inside. And it's just a uh, straight OD. And it looks like it's never been used. It's got sort of like the dried up Cosmoline or, you know, rust uh, inhibitor dried up on it. So I asked Tom about these, what the deal was. And he said he found these in the dumpster across the street from his, from where he lives. So he, uh, he grabbed them and thought of me and, and sent them to me. So thank you very much, Tom. I will take these to work and we will, uh, we will use them. Okay. All right. A day later, actually on Monday, I got another package and this is what I was expecting to get. These are some of those TIG rod or I'm sorry, TIG torch holders that Tom makes up and he does such a good job with these things. I asked him if he would make me some. <laughs> so the, it really came up at work. Uh, we were doing, me and my uh, buddy at work there, my new uh, machinist helper, we've been doing some TIG welding and we never have a good place to set our, our torch whenever we're done. I was telling him, I was like, man, Tom has got an awesome little holder that he makes up that uh, I'm gonna call him up and see if he'll make me one. So he did and he made me three. So what we got is, um, I'm going to make one for work and I'm going to make probably two for here. Say I'm going to have one for the uh, rotary welding table and I'll have another one that maybe I can just keep down there on my, uh, my main welding table. So those are pretty cool. Oh, and what I'm going to do is uh, at work I've got two Sterrett mags, mag magnets, and it has a quarter 20 hole. So what I'm going to do is thread these and just screw them right in there. Now. I've got this magnet, this is an old Enco. So we may see about using this magnet for me to use right here. And that'll work great. Just stick it where you want and hang your, hang your torch on it. So we got that from Tom. Thank you very much for making those up for me, buddy. And then we got that big threading tool that he had showed in one of his meatloafs. This is a one inch tool bit that's been ground for threading. All right, so we got that, and we've also got this cool little guy right here, carbide scribe that retracts up into the body. So I don't think he likes my little general ones that I had bought and was using, so he, he sent me that. And then one more, which is really, really cool, I think, is my very first can't twist clamp. And I say my very first because the other ones that I've shown you that I've got don't say can't twist on them. So I don't think they're a real can't twist brand. They're, they're a copy of a can't twist, I believe. So I thought that was just really cool. I seen that wrapped up in there and this is probably their smallest size, but it's a one inch. All right. So thanks Tom for the little can't twist. I'm going to keep these. I got all my other little C clamps right down here and I'm going to, Put that right up there with those guys. In case you didn't see it, here's another little tiny clamp that he sent me. These are also one of my favorites. This is an Armstrong extra heavy duty clamp. Use a, a wrench to uh, tighten it up. You can use it to pick up plate steel. Or just do some heavy clamping. All right. So that's, uh, that's all of our viewer gifts from Tom and our flea market stuff. And I'll be right back. Got a couple more things to show you, okay? All right, we got a couple more uh, quick viewer mails here to, to share with you. And uh, this one right here comes from another good friend of mine and uh, another fellow YouTube creator. And uh, that is Ray Cornelia over there in Fresno, California. So some of you probably have seen this stuff already because the other guys have been showing it. But what Ray has done is sent me some of his stickers. He come up with a nice with a nice logo for his uh, for his channel artwork there and it's uh, Ray's Garage okay he's also got a, uh, a link raysgarage69.com very nice Ray thank you these are some really great stickers I like them so we got a couple different flavors uh, I believe these are vinyl cut we have a uh, silver grayish color and then a black and then we have the uh, the print style kind of like mine I believe okay so I'm gonna put one on the truck and uh, the other ones are gonna go in the shop here somewhere so we'll, we'll pick a spot 
We also got his new business cards. You got the raised garage on one side, the cool diamond plate there. And then we got his, uh, he's got his email address, his location, and his hyperlink right there. So very nice, Ray. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll put, I'll definitely put one over here. Most of my stickers have been kind of going there. That's like the most convenient spot for uh, people to kind of see their decals. So I've been putting everything there. And uh, I'm going to try to find another spot here in the shop to start putting some. I just don't really know where. So we'll, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out eventually. But anyway, thank you, Ray, for the, uh, for the stickers. And I've already got your uh, business cards over there with the other guys. And okay, so we got one more box right here. And uh, this comes from Steve Whippy. Now, I don't know where Steve, Steve is from. I didn't think to ask him where he's from, but anyway, he, uh, he sent me an email back whenever I was showing a little bit of polishing using that Miracle Polishing Cloth. And uh, that, was, that was this, this right here. I've already, I bought me a couple more, and that was this Miracle Polishing Cloth. And that's whenever I was polishing on that copper. And uh, Steve had contacted me and said that he found something that he thinks worked really good and he wanted he wanted to send me some as a contribution to the welding table project so that's what he's done all right we've got a couple of the uh the terry cloths the microfiber cloths and then what we got here is some of the flitz polish so i have seen this i've, I've never actually bought any and tried it but i have seen it so we've got the flitz polish and this is for metal plastic and fiberglass it says restores paint also all right, we've also got stainless steel and chrome polish, okay? Guess you guys can see that. And we got one more, and that is instant brass and copper tarnish remover. So I think what, he, what, what this would be good for is my copper on the welding table. Uh, after give it a little time, we'll start, you'll start seeing that tarnish color on it. And we'll try this and see how it does and see if it cleans it back off. So uh, instantly removes heavy tarnish, rust and corrosion, calcium deposits and stains, heavy oxidation, water spots and stains. On brass, copper, aluminum, painted surfaces, glass, plastic, fiberglass, and brick. Okay, not suitable for chrome. So we'll, we'll just stick to the uh, instructions on this stuff here. So that was the stuff from, um, from Steve right there. And we're going to give that a shot. And what I'll do, we'll, uh, once I'm putting the welding table together, we'll show a couple clips of this on the, uh, the copper, the grounding system. This is it right here, completed. And we'll go ahead and give this another polish. And we'll, we'll use the new flits from, uh, from Steve there. Okay, so... Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, it's a very nice stuff, and uh, I, re I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Okay, one final note that I want to mention is uh, I'm going to throw some pictures up at the end of the video. Uh, me and my buddy at work, my coworker, we uh, we have repainted the boring mill. We've gone through a little bit of a slow period, so we've taken a little time to uh, get over there, clean it up, uh, scrape it, wire brush it, clean it. And, uh, and repaint it. So it turned out really nice and everybody is uh, actually really, really proud to see that out in our shop now. It's kind of like a nice little centerpiece of the shop. So I'm gonna show some pictures of that. And uh, I've also got a couple of pictures of people that have sent me pictures of their A-Bomb 79 sticker, okay? So I'll throw those at the end of the video. And um, anybody else that uh, would like to see their picture of this sticker in the video, email it to me and I'll throw it in an SNS for you, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and run a 5 8 reamer through this base here and there's a couple reasons for that and we'll get to that real soon. So we've already got her just snugged up and it's not very, it's not gonna need very much, you know, to come out of here with this reamer.
Okay, that's it. All right, we'll move on. So what we got here is a big piece of aluminum round that we used to use as a fixture plate on our big Monarch blade. It was the big brother of this Monarch here. And I saved this because these are very handy sometimes when you need it. And this is the first time that I've actually got to use this in the new shop here. And the last time it was used was on our big Monarch. But what I'm gonna do is show you on the, uh, the bottom here of the vise, I figured it would be pretty simple to uh, bolt it to the center to a fixturing plate on the lathe and that way we can just face it off instead of trying to uh, chuck it and indicate it. A fixture plate would be easy. This is kind of similar to the uh, mini pallet idea that you see like uh, Tom Lipton shows a lot of the mini pallets and some of the other guys have been using them and uh, so I guess this is my kind of my uh, lathe version of it. So it's been machined on both sides. This is the side that we're going to push up against the chuck right here, okay? And I just wanted to show it to you. I've kind of wiped it off and got the dust off of it. This is the side that we're going to use right here. And we're going to mount it to this area right here. So after we true it up, we're going to take a, a nice face cut across it to make sure that it's flat. And then we'll bolt that, uh, that base onto here, okay? So that's the reason why I wanted to use... Um, open that hole up here to 5 8 One was so that I could use this tapped hole here as 5 8 The other side was half inch. But there was another reason why I want to go with 5 8 right here and that is to make an alignment pin for the bottom of the vise so it will swivel here and we got a nice nice true round hole on a standard size there. Okay so uh, let's get this chucked up and let's see okay so we're going to comb on up in here with it. All right, so get to uh, get the indicator set up, and we'll get her trued up. Ain't off. It really doesn't have to be off any, but I know that this hole is going to be pretty well true to the uh, machined register here. So I'm going to go ahead and true it up so it'll run as close as possible. Then we'll make a face cut across it, okay? All right, we'll go ahead and it's pushed back against the, uh, the jaws there, but I'll tell you what, let's just go ahead and do that. We're going to double check it. And that's where it's going to stay there. We'll face it true. Let's go ahead and get the OD running true. That's not too bad, and almost 60 thousandths on the uh, first try there. got a lot of little nicks and things on it because this thing's been rolled around a lot and thrown here and thrown there so it'll be just about where we need right here You know I'm never good with one thousand, so I gotta get it closer, don't I? Alright. <laughs> That's within one. We'll leave it there. I'm gonna take ten thousandths and we'll see if that'll true her up.
All right, that ain't too bad right there. It's flat, so what I'll do is uh, let me get some Scotch Brite and we'll slick it up. That was a pretty coarse feed across the face there, but we're just looking for a flat, true face. See what it does to this here. It's machined a while back. Okay. Alright, that'll work. Oh, let's get her bolted up. I don't want to take, put too much pressure on it. I'm going to leave it just, just right there because it can snap that. We just want to clean it up. Okay. Assuming it should be catching those three little pads there in the center too. Just started touching. Yeah, I can see where it touched this one and this one. So let's go another 10. All right. Sounded like we made the touch down there. Yep. I see cut on all three surfaces. Everything looks good there. Just trying to knock the fuzz off. Okay. That's good. Maybe it'll stay flat and we can go ahead and flip her around. Man, that looks better than factory, huh? Alright, I don't know if my bolts will go all the way in here. We'll try it. Might have to get some more washers. Come on, man. Ah, we got it. Okay. That's really all it needs, too. Just a little bit. And it should be pulling down on those three little pads there, too. Okay. I think that'll be it right there. Alright, let's get set up and face that off.
This one on this side right here, just it's got that little bit of chattery look to it because it's this gap here, so it's kind of bouncing a little bit. So that's pretty flat right there, but what I want to do is I'm going to attempt one more pass across it, say like two thousandths, and see if we can <clears throat> fix that. I'm also, what I'm going to do is uh, slow it down. Sometimes the slower speed will help you with the chattering problem. So, I'm just give it two, and I'm going to let her give it another shot. like we did. Yeah, that looks good. I think that's going to work. You can still see a little bit right there, but we're going to let it live. If I have to, I'll do a little bit of hand lapping on it to get it to sit flat. should have two nice flat surfaces and I'm, I'm going to kind of verify it. I'm going to go over there and, and uh, set it down on a nice flat surface and if we have to we'll do a little bit of hand lapping. Alright. Alright, one step further to a uh, better bench vise.